Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here. I'd like to uh, welcome you all to our event. Uh, my name is Nancy Paul, and I am the acting coordinator at the Richard M. Bowman uh, Center for Local History here in Charles City. We are delighted to partner with the African American Heritage Society of New Kent County, who will present today's uh, virtual program. This is a program focused specifically on New Kent County, but the history is reflective of the broader history of uh, schools historically and in, uh, most likely found in other counties. You'll find similar patterns in other counties around Virginia. Uh, our presenters are Camilla Trammell and LaVon Allen, who are co-founders of the Society, uh, authors of numerous publications and respected New Kent historians. All right, uh, and with that, I'm going to start sharing uh, the screen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Camilla Tramiel, and I am president of the African American Historical Society of New Kent County. Uh, today, our topics for discussion are Freedman Bureau Schools, the colored schools that in New Kent County, Rosenwald Schools, New Kent Training School, and George W. Watkins. Uh, please do not be offended by the word colored schools in New Kent because that was the language that was used at the time. We're going to start with the Freedmen's Bureau, uh, Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands, short for Freedmen's Bureau. The Freedmen's Bureau, uh, November 1864, Abraham Lincoln won his second term in office and he was assassinated April 1865. On May 1865, the Civil War ends. The United States was faced with what to do with 4 million free slaves and other people that were displaced during the Civil War. Vice President Andrew Johnson is now President Johnson and he tried all he could to get rid of the Freedmen's Bureau. He tried to veto it by calling it unconstitutional, unnecessary and extra judicial. His veto failed and the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen and Abandoned Lands became a reality. The Freedmen Bureau was established by Congress in 1865 to educate free men, former slaves, and poor whites in the South. And I'm stressing in the South because those were the states that became Confederate states, not the Northern states, but the states that became federal, federal states became part of the Freedmen's Bureau. The schools were in existence from 1866 to 1872 when the Bureau was disbanded. Public schools became established in each state. In Virginia, public schools became existent in 1870. Uh, Major Oliver Howard was assigned as commissioner of the Bureau. Oliver Howard is also the namesake for Howard University in Washington, DC. In 1867, there was 192 schools in Virginia with 8,879 students and 220 teachers. By the end of the Bureau's tenure in 1872, 450 teachers had taught almost 12,000 black students in the state of Virginia. The Freedmen's Bureau was not funded by the county, the state or the government. You would think that because the government established the Freedmen's Bureau that they were paying money, but no, uh, they decided that their biggest problem was how to get the Confederate States back to the United States. So that's where they spent all their money on. They were not allowed to spend money on school books, teacher salaries or school buildings. 
Most of the Freedom of Bureau schools were provided by people in the neighborhood free of charge or rented from the property owner. Now, who paid the teachers? Most of the religious organizations paid the bills for the teachers. The New York branch of the Freedmen's Union Commission, they were the biggest uh, company, for lack of a better word, who was in charge of the Freedmen's Bureaus. The others were Quaker organization, Episcopal churches, and a lot of missionary associations. Next slide. Here is a list of the Freedmen Bureau schools that was in New Kent with the teachers and the number of students in 1869 and 1870. There were nine schools, uh, Eltham, Howard, Lincoln, Lowell, New Kent, Providence Forge, Sumner, Tunstall, and Olivet. Uh, for Tunstall and Olivet, I have them highlighted because we do still have a Tunstall school in New Kent County, but we're doing more research to find out whether it's the same Tunstall school. Next slide. This is a copy of a teacher's report for the Eltham School. If you will notice, under Eltham, it says it is ungraded. Ungraded means that the students in the school are not assigned grade one, two, three, four, and five. They were ungraded. All they were taught was reading, writing, and arithmetic. Under the society, it has the New York Un Union Commission who paid for this particular school. It talks about the name of the building, whether it was supported by the school board, um, how many teachers, and you notice where it says, go down a little, where it says total enrollment for the month. For the month of November, it was 19 students. Uh, teachers' monthly reports were done each month. Next slide. And this is just the, the second half of the same sheet of paper. It talks about uh, whether there were any students over 16 years old, how many were in alphabet, how many who could uh, read and spell, how many in geography class, how many in arithmetic class, how many could write, uh, and if there were any students that were free before the Civil War and it is signed by the teacher. This is the commission report that goes to Washington, DC. And this is for the district, the 11th district, which is Farmville, Virginia. Uh, you will see that in block number three. These are the schools that are located in the 11th district. Number four tells you the number of teachers. And uh, for the Freeman's Bureau, believe it or not, most of the teachers that taught the schools, they were white teachers. A lot of them were missionaries who didn't mind giving their time to teach colored students. Block five talks about the post office addresses of the teachers that taught. And here you have Molly Kennedy, who is from New Kent County and lived in the Tunstall neighborhood. Block number six talks about the number of schoolhouses and the condition of the schools, whether they needed repair, whether they were owned by the Freedmen Bureau and who was paying. And the uh, commissioner, he had to visit the school from time to time. And in block number seven, it tells you how many schools he visited for the month of November. And Farmville is in Prince Edward County. Next slide. And this is just the second half 
of the, the same page. And in block number 17, it said, are there any night nice schools for adults in this 11th district? And it says, yeah, but it doesn't give you how many uh, adults went to school at night. And of course the adults, the, the men had to work in the daytime and the women had to take care of the kids. So the adults went to school at night and the children went to school in the daytime. Next slide. This is a bill, an invoice, and it tells the number of schools and who was paying for the school. Uh, the, on the second line, it says Tunstall, and this lists the name of the teachers and how much they were paid each month, $10 a month. And you will see that Mr. Jennings, if you go all the way to remarks, it said he resigned. And that's why they had to uh, keep track of this teachers from month to month because some of them resigned, some of them transferred to another school or some of them just stopped teaching altogether. And you have Olivet, you have Olivet Church. Uh, the teacher was Joseph E. Lee and he was paid $20 a month. Next slide. The Freeman Bureau office in New Kent. New Kent was in District 9 and A.M. Brooks was the superintendent for New Kent County. His office was in Burnsville. New Kent had two offices, one in Burnsville and one at New Kent Courthouse. The other commissioners, assistant sub assistant commissioners were Mr. Brooks again, William H. Sloan and E.G. Townsend. In 1870, Virginia passes the law that they are going to do public schools. However, the public schools still have to be two schools. They have to be racial segregated. That means they have to have one school for the white children and one school for the black children. Their goal was to create more than 2,800 public schools and hired 3,000 teachers by August 1871. The first state school superintendent for Virginia was William Ruffner. And you may have heard his name because I know there is a Ruffner Middle School in the Hampton area. And it is named after William Ruffner. In 1871, this is the enrollment for the state of Virginia. It tells you how many schools, how many black schools, how many colored schools, the teachers, whether they were male, female, and how many students. To your far right, you have New Kent County. In 1871, there were three white schools, three white teachers, 38 white students, no colored schools, no colored teachers, no colored students on record. And I'm saying on record because there are a lot of people, like some of the churches still taught schools, but they were not recognized by the state of Virginia. In 1874, this is the Virginia report. There were 224 white students and 109 colored students and four teachers. However, there were no colored schools, no colored teachers. Next slide. And this is for 1877. There are four white teachers, three ungraded schools. As I said, ungraded means reading, write, writing, and arithmetic, just the basic things that students needed to know. There were two colored teachers and three colored ungraded schools. 1879, we're moving on up. New Kent is divided into districts. And in New Kent, we have eight white schools, 16 white teachers, 747 white students, 
However, there are only four colored schools, eight colored teachers, and 888 colored students. Half as many schools, half as many colored teachers. However, there are more colored students. Next slide. These are the 16 colored schools that we found in New Kent County. Uh, I'm not going to name all of them because I do have pictures of those. Next slide. The superintendent for New Kent County was a lady by the name of Septiva Crutchfield. She was from Williamsburg, Virginia. So instead of her being a superintendent like the uh, white person was, they are called gene supervisors. And Ms. Crutchfield was this gene supervisor for New Kent County. She served as a liaison for the black schools, the county administrator, she visited the schools. She was holding fairs and exhibits to raise money to uh, remodel buildings, to keep the maintenance up, to buy books for the kids, to buy desks for the kids. In 1942 and 1943, there were 2,104 gene supervisors in the state of Virginia. Next slide. This is a list of the gene supervisors from other counties in 1942 for the state of Virginia. Boulevard Indian School. Even though Boulevard was not an Indian school, it was, I mean, not, I'm sorry, not a color school, it was part of New Kent County, so we included it in, uh, included in our exhibits. It's a one-room schoolhouse built in 1910 for the Chickahominy Indians. In 1950, the school closed because of small attendance, and the 16 students were bused to the three-room Samaria Indian School in Charles City County. Because the students lived in New Kent County, New Kent paid Charles City School District a tuition fee to enroll the Boulevard schools in Samaria. Next slide. Cook's Mill School. This is a picture of Cook's Mill School. And if you know anything about New Kent, Cook's Mill School is located on Cook's Mill Road across the street from Second Elam Church. You see a number five there. Every district had a white school and a color school, and each school was associated with a number. So Cook's Mill Color School was the number five color school in the Black Creek District, Black Creek School District. In 1919, uh, Cook's Mill had 70 students. Trustees for the schools. Each school had a trustee. The school trustees went to the school board meetings and talked about the maintenance of the school, what the kids needed as far as funding. If the school needed maintenance done, the county usually would buy the materials and the school trustees would perform the work on the schools at no cost. And most of the trustees is like four trustees for each is one for each school. Just like we have a school in each neighborhood, we have trustees for each school. And this is a list of some of the teachers and some of the students that went to Cooks Mill School. Next slide. This is a picture of Lanexa School. Uh, I have that is located on, that it was located on Old Telegraph Road, but it is located on South Waterside Drive in Lenexa. That's a typo by me. And a list of some of the students that were at the school. Next slide. This is Mount Castle School, a one-room school that began about 1893. 
located near Mount Calvary Baptist Church. And these are some of the teachers and some of the students. Uh, ja um, excuse me. Jackson Davis was the school district school superintendent. What he did was to go around to each school and take pictures of each school showing their physical condition. And this particular day when he came around, the, the students and the teachers decided that they wanted to be in the picture. So when he took the picture, he took a picture of everybody. And these are some, listed some of the teachers and some of the students that attended Mount Castle School. Next slide. This is Mount Pleasant School located beside Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Providence Forest community. In 1909, the church was destroyed by fire. However, they had another building called Gideon Hall, so church and school continued. Some of the teachers that attended Mount Pleasant School. New Branch Color School. New Branch School was in or beside New Branch Baptist Church. Uh, built in 1912, it was located on Old River Road in the Quentin community. The church is no longer uh, in existence. You will see the name of uh, Lula Jones, who was a teacher in 1917, and some of the students. This is New Elam School. It was a one-room school located inside New Elam Church. And how do I know it was inside the church? Because I read the school report and it said the students were sitting in pews. So I'm assuming that it was inside the church. And there's a teacher and the name of some of the students. And this is an old picture of the original New Elam Baptist Church located on Cumberland Road. Newcastle School, we do not have a picture of Newcastle School. We only have the names of teachers. And we do know that there was a Newcastle school because it is part of the school board meeting minute records. So we do know that there was a Newcastle school. We just don't have a picture. Next slide. Plum Point School, it was built in 1906 and served Plum Point and Ware Creek community. It was used as a Sunday school before New Ken before, I'm sorry, St. Luke Baptist Church became in existence. They had Sunday schools, they had Sunday school anniversary, and they had church in the Plum Point School. In 1919, this school had 37 students and listed as some of the teachers and some of the students. And even though Plum Point was a distance from Mount Olive Baptist Church, some of the students that live around Mount Olive Baptist Church, which is on Holly Fork Road, attended the Plum Point School. Next slide. Primary Color School. This school was on the LVA website with the exact name that I have here. It says Primary Color School. There was no teachers listed. There was no location listed. And there were no students name listed. In the left-hand corner, you will see a man outside who's looking like he's getting ready to light a cigar. Well, that is Mr. Jackson Davis, the man that went around the entire state of Virginia and took pictures of all the color schools in the state of Virginia. Next slide. Rough and Ready School, it was originally a one 
room white school that were passed on to the color community. It was located on Good Hope, Good Hope Road in Burrell Town. And Burrell Town, if you know anything about uh, New Kent County, if you know where James Burrell stays and, and Charles Moss stays, that's Burrell Town. Listed are some of the teachers and some of the students. And we even have one that's listed as a principal. Second Liberty School, it was a multi-building school located across from Second Liberty Church. When uh, in 1934, the New Kent Training School became in existence. So the uh, Second Liberty School was moved to the New Kent Training School site, which became four buildings. Listed are some of the teachers and some of the students. St. Peter's School, a one room school located near St. Peter's Church built in 1901 with grades one through seven. And in 1917, it had 66 students. It served the Quentin and Tallisville communities. And you will see Jackson Davis do on the job, on the job. And if you look at the building, you will see that the window is up. So I don't know whether the window was broken because Mr. Davis still has his coat on. We know we, they didn't have air conditioning and we know they didn't have heat. They just had a pot valley wood stove. Next slide. This school was listed in the 1896 Virginia School Journal. Um, just like it's written, I got it just like it was written in the book. It said color school at Tallisville. It didn't have a picture. It had that one teacher and a list of students that was going to this particular school in 1896. We know it's in Tallisville, but where in Tallisville we haven't found that out yet. Next slide. This is the Tunstall School, one of the oldest schools in New Kent. And this is the one that I talked about that may have been a Freedmen's Bureau school. We're not sure. We're doing research and working on that. Uh, it's a two room school serving grades one through seven in the Quentin community near Ebenezer Baptist Church. After grade seven, the students had to attend New Kent Training School. It was used as a community center in 2009 and it is now in need of really, really, really good repair. Uh, it had, <clears throat> excuse me, they had a storm a few years ago and the tree fell on the right side of the building. So it is in need of repair. Um, there's a teacher listed and there are some students listed. Next slide. This is Warren Eye School, one room school built in 1913, located near Warren Eye Swamp. Swamp near Angel View Church. Uh, it was formerly a white school also. Uh, some of the teachers and some of the students are listed. Zion Providence. Zion Providence was also originally a white school that was passed down to the, uh, as a color school located in the New Kent Courthouse area, may have been a part of Olivet Presbyterian Church as a Freedmen Bureau School. It was relocated and became one of the four buildings to complete the New Kent Training School. Listed are some of the teachers. And this is another unnamed school in New Kent that was found on the Library of Virginia website. 
Can you hear me? Yep, there you go. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Booker T. Washington, president of Tuskegee Institute and philanthropist Julius Rosenwald, president of Sears, Roebuck and Company, in partnership provided funds con to construct more than 5,000 schools for African Americans in 15 states throughout the South. These schools provided African American students the opportunity to receive an education during the long decades of segregation. The Rosenwald schools are similar in look because a published pamphlet of school plans was sent to each community to use in the constructions of their school buildings. Rosenwald schools were built from 1917 to 1932. And below you will see the partnership pictures of George, uh, Booker T. Washington and Julius Rosenwald. New Kent County had five Rosenwald schools. They were Bach, Cumberland, Mount Nebo, Quentin, and the last one we have two names there, Oak slash Double Oak. There were two schools in the community and one was called the Oak and the other one was called the Double Oak. Limited information is really available for either of these schools. So at this point, we are still trying to verify which one of these is actually the Rosenwald schools. And this will certainly be updated as soon as we are able to verify that it was the Oak or Double Oak schools. Buck, colored school number one. Originally a white two-room school built in 1890, used as a color school beginning in 1895. It served the Baronsville committee, community with grades one through seven, had 61 students in 1919, and was located on Tabernacle Road. And below you will see some of the teachers that taught there in the years that they taught. Cumberland School. Cumberland Color School was a two classroom, two teacher type school located on two acres near the New Kent Courthouse. It served the lower end of New Kent, which include Cook's Mill, Angel View, Mount Nebel, Ware Creek, and Plum Point from the early 1900s until 1959. And below you will see some of the teachers and the years that they taught there. Mount Nebel Color School number two was a one room school located near Mount Nebel Baptist Church with grades one through seven had 30 students in 1919, and Albert Jones served as the trustee. Below you will see some of the teachers and a couple of the years that they taught at the Mount Nebel School. Quentin School. The Quentin Color School opened in the early 1900s and is still standing today. It was a two room school serving grades one through seven and it was remodeled between 1923 and 1924. There are uh, three names of some of the teachers that did teach there. At this time, plans are being made for the preservation and the restoration of this building. The Oak Double Oak. Because of the limited information that is available on these schools, there is no picture available. It was originally a white two-room school, and it served the Providence Forge community. One of the teachers was Robert S. Allen, and Robert S. Allen was a very good friend of Booker T. Washington. He also attended the Hampton Normal and Agriculture Institute, which is now Hampton University, at the same time that Booker T. Washington, and he also graduated in the same class with Booker T. Washington in 1875. New Kent Training School, 1933 to 1950.
The new Kentrain School was an abandoned four-room white high school that was moved to a site that was donated by Mr. Noah D. Brown. The 1933-34 school term marked the beginning of the new Kent Training School, offering high school advantages to black students of the county and graduating its first class of six students in 1935. Reverend George W. Watkins was the principal of the new Kent Training School and his wife, Thelma Watkins, was a teacher and librarian for the school. Reverend Watkins was also the minister of Second Liberty Baptist Church, which is one of the oldest black churches in New Kent County. Many of these students had to walk to school and often walked a distance of three to 12 miles a day. The black students faced a series of obstacles while receiving their education. Students often had to sit on discarded used church benches that were hard with straight backs for hours. They also sat on the window sills and trash baskets. These students did not have a desk. The students that had a desk used discarded desks that had so many scratches and carvings that the students could hardly find a smooth surface for them to write on. The first metal school bus that was available for the black students to ride was purchased in 1945 by Mr. William Jackson. He had students attending the system and wanted them to have a better means of transportation. In order to purchase this bus, Mr. Jackson had to borrow from the Citizens and Farmers Bank $1,500. For collateral, he had to put up his house, his land, and a mule. Citizen and Farmers was so sure that Mr. Jackson would not be able to purchase, to pay back the loan, that they had already started to proceed with plans for closing in on his property. Mr. Jackson, to the bank surprise, paid the loan in full several months before it was due. Next. George W. Watkins School, 1950 through 1969. And here are two pictures. To your left, you'll see the construction of the George W. Watkins School that was in 1949. And then to the right, you will see the George W. Watkins School. And this is a picture that was taken in 1955. In 1950, the new Kent Training School was changed to the George W. Watkins School housing grades P to 11. The 1958-59 school term marked the consolidation of all elementary schools serving black students in the county with the George W. Watkins School. In 1952, grade 12 was added to all high schools in Virginia. The George W. Watkins School would soon become the George W. Watkins High School. This school became an irreplaceable surviving example of an educational institution that served African Americans since 1951. It represented several phases in the education of African Americans in New Kent County, Virginia. It is a national historic landmark. This gets us to the end of our session and we will be taking questions. For those of you who may not have the time to ask questions or will think of questions at a later time, you can email me at laahsnkc at gmail.com. You may now ask your questions.